did it mean, Bowser? YouTube, I'm back again for another How to Play video, and today I'm very excited to teach you how to play Rocket Fire. This is for two to four players, ages 10 plus, and I do have an early version of the game right here, so if something looks slightly different from your version of the game, no worries, we're still going to be talking about the same core gameplay. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get out all the cards and shuffle them up into their own three distinct piles. The green-backed resource cards, the blue-backed fuel cards, and the red-backed power cards. For the green-backed cards, you're going to set four resource cards on the bottom row like so, and then you're going to set eight fuel cards up at the top like so. Put all the components into their own separate piles with the chips over here, the rocket chips, the fuel cells, and all these other extra little knickknacks and paddywhacks into their own separate pile. With that, you're now going to set up each player's player area. And I have a two-player game set up. So each player is going to get three red-backed power cards. And each player is also going to get two chips of each color, like so. Now, each player is going to roll one die. The person who gets the highest number by themselves is going to be the first player. And each player is then going to discard into a special discard pile one of their power cards. However, before we do that, I'd recommend listening to the rest of the video so you can better understand how the game works and also what all the different power cards do. So I'll give you a friendly reminder at the end of this video that you still need to do that. With that done, you are now ready to start the game. And I feel like the easiest way to explain this game to you is to talk to you about the three core actions in the game. Because on your turn, you're going to roll the dice, you're going to do a little bit of bookkeeping, which we'll talk about in a minute, and then you're going to perform one of the three actions on your turn. So the first action you can do is you can reserve one of the bottom resource cards. These cards are not going to cost you any money, and how it works is on your turn, you just take one of the cards and you plop it into one of your four reserve spots you have on your board. If all four of these slots are full on your board, then you obviously cannot take this action. Now, resource cards are going to be how you get more chips. So, for instance, if an eight is rolled on the die on your turn or on someone else's turn, then you're going to gain two red chips, a green chip, and a blue chip. And there is no maximum to how many chips you can have. Now, the next action you could potentially take is to purchase one of the eight fuel cards that's up at the top. Now, how this works is you're going to pay the cost in chips on the bottom of the card. So in order to purchase this card, I would need two green chips, two blue chips. I would pay those back to the bank, and then I would place it into one of my four reserve spots down on the bottom. Once again, if you don't have an open slot down here, though, you can't take this action. Now, fuel cards are going to help you win the game because if the number in the top left corner is ever rolled, you will get the number in the top right corner in fuel cells, which are these little silver doodads right here. And I'll explain how these work a little bit later. But the big rule to remember when purchasing a fuel card is you cannot have two of the same number down in your reserve area. So if on one turn I got this 7 plus 6 down here, I could not next turn get this other 7. That being said, it is important to note that it's okay to have these two cards down in my reserve area because one of them is a fuel card with a 7 and one of them is a resource card with a 7 and that's totally fine. Now the final game action that you can choose on your turn if you don't want to reserve a resource card or purchase a fuel card is to purchase a power card. And this just has you paying one of your chips of any color to the bank and then drawing three power cards. One of them you're going to keep and put it into your hand. And once again, there is no limit to the number of these cards you can have in your hand. One of them is going to go on top of the deck and one of them is going to go on the bottom of the deck. But now that we've explained the three main actions in the game, let's talk about how you're actually going to start the game. So in the first round, you cannot purchase power cards and you can't use power cards either. You're either going to reserve resource cards for free or pay the cost for fuel cards. And you're going to do this until all four of your slots are filled, at which point you will refill the main area. And then the next player clockwise around the table will do the same thing until everyone will have a full reserve slot area down here. Once everyone's got four cards down there, you're ready to start the regular game. But let's show you how this player might do this. So they might go hard on resources and they might say, you know what, 8 is one of the most commonly rolled numbers, so I'm going to take all three of these cards right here, because if 8 hits, I'm going to get a whole boatload of chips. And then we'll get ourselves one lottery ticket here with an 11. It's not likely to happen, but we'll pay the two green and the two blue, and then we will put that into the fourth slot down here. Replenish everything. And for the sake of this example, we'll just say that this player is going to take all four resource cards. They're just going to hoard chips. So now we're going to go over what a real turn will look like. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to roll the dice, and you're going to call out the total of the dice. 
Each player is now going to look down at their board and see if any of their cards have that number listed on the top. They're then going to gain that reward. So this player over here hit it big. There's eight, eight, eight on these three cards, which means they're going to collect all 10 of the chips down here. Two greens, three blues, two yellows, and two reds go into their chip pile. However, these three resource cards go into a discard pile off to the side. This player over here also hit on two eights, so they're going to get three reds, two blues, and two yellows. And of course, their resource cards are going to get discarded as well. Now that everyone has done that, whoever rolled the die is now going to take one of the three actions that we discussed a little bit earlier. So we'll say that this player is going to purchase this six fuel card right here with a red, green, and two yellows, place that into their reserve spot, and now before they pass the die to the next player clockwise to signify it's there end of their turn, they can also play any number of their power cards if they'd like. And to play a power card, you're going to place the card face up, pay its chip cost, which is in the top right hand corner, and then resolve the power on the card. However, before that happens, people do have a chance to block your action, but we'll explain that a little bit more when we go over all the different powers in a minute. To end your turn though, you're going to refill out the main area and then pass the dice to the next player. So now this player is going to go, and we're going to pretend that they happen to roll a 6. So they don't actually score anything with their 7 and 7, 10, 12. However, this player, once again, it's not their turn, is going to score one of their fuel cards. So since the 6 was rolled, they're going to collect 7 fuel cells. Papow. However, if you ever have 7 fuel cells, they automatically convert into a rocket, and then you can slot the rocket into one of your 6 rocket slots on your board making sure, of course, to put the fuel cells back into the bank. One thing to note is that when you resolve a fuel card, you don't actually discard the fuel card when you're done. It's going to go next to your board. You won't be able to utilize the card again, but it will help you keep track of how many fuel cells you have if there happens to be a mix-up later in the game. Now that everyone's resolved their sixes, whoever rolled the die is going to take one action, and we're just going to pretend like they're going to reserve this resource card right here, refill the row, pass the dice, and you're going to continue to do this basic gameplay until someone gets six or more rockets in their area. Now, if two or more players reach six rockets on the same turn, then the player with the most fuel cells left over is going to win the game. If that also happens to be the tie, then the player with the most chips left wins the game. But now that we've talked about the core gameplay loop, let's get back to the red back power cards. Because once again, before you start the game, you are going to have to discard one of your three cards. And when it comes to these power cards, there is no limit to the number of power cards you can have in your hand. There is no limit to the number of power cards you can play on a given turn. And the cost to play a power card is listed in the top right hand corner of all the power cards. That's how many chips you have to get rid of in order to play it. And you can discard whatever color chips you like in order to do it. So first we have the booster card. This one's going to allow you to add another roll number to a fuel card that is plus one or minus one from one of its roll numbers. So for instance, if we had this fuel card right here, which had a seven, and we played the booster on it, we would now add this six, which means if we hit a six or if we hit a seven, this is going to trigger. Next we have fuel leak. All players, including yourself, are going to discard one of their fuel cards from their reserve slots if they have one. If you don't have a fuel card in front of you when this card is played, well then good for you. Next we have the Force Trade. This one's going to allow you to take a reserve card from a player board and exchange it with another reserve card from a different player board. This could be on any play board and be a fuel or resource card. However, this could not be used on an already resolved fuel card like one that's been discarded to the side of someone's board. Next we have Recall. This one's going to allow you to pick a chip color then all players put all chips of that color back to the bank. Freeze will allow you to pick out one of the punch-out numbers over here and then place it physically on top of the Freeze card. The next time that number is rolled, the roll is canceled and Freeze is then discarded. And this does happen after roll control if it is played, so let's take a second to talk about roll control. After you roll the dice, but before you call out the roll number, you can play this card and change the roll number by 1, up, or down. This cannot make it a 1 or 13, though. Next, we have the Infinite Chip card. This one's going to allow you to place a chip of any color on this card from the chip bank, and this is going to reduce the cost of all fuel cards by one of the chosen color for you. 
This card is actually going to stay in play the entire game, and it's just going to give you a discount. So, for instance, if I were to put a blue chip on here for the rest of the game, any fuel card I purchase is going to cost one less blue chip. Next, we have the Power Shield. This can be played any time a player plays a power card, and that will block the power card and stop it from happening. And last but not least, we have Stolen Power. You're going to look through the discard pile of power cards and pick one, show that card to all the other players, and put it into your hand. And you're ready to play Rocket Fire. If this helped you out, please consider giving it a thumbs up or click it on that subscribe button as I teach new games all the time. And if you're more interested in Rocket Fire, I'll post a link down below. But go have some fun, and thanks for your time, YouTube.